Uh, so I understand this is your uh, third nomination, and I'm probably it's probably uh, you would probably asked this already, but uh, how does this feel different from the previous two, and what are you two feeling now? <laughs> I don't know if we I don't know if we can go too fine grained and tell you how it feels different because they're a decade apart and you forget everything. <laughs> well, it, it, it's it doesn't get old. I'll tell you no. that. It, you know, it's just I think it's just as thrilling and just as uncertain as it as it ever was um and but i can tell you that the um the i think the the media world has changed mm -hmm. uh, over the years over you know the last few decades it, it's quite different in terms of exposure and all the the venues that you can talk to press and all that sort of thing so that's yeah that's quite different so we we feel quite uh um uh, you know, well, just overwhelmed with communication in a good way because so That's many great. people are writing with uh, nice thoughts and congratulations, and um, it's 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 great. You know, we um, we're 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 very excited actually. I think I think I was under the impression that we were going to be cooler about it, having been through it before, mm -hmm. but not really, not really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, I I noticed that um when uh, when. When you uh, get on a short list, which is almost as similar to uh, documentary The Internal Spring, uh, you know I kept on getting emails about that film too because it was Canadian. And then it's such a it's such a interesting process how um, you get shortlisted for the Oscars and it keeps on going and going. I mean how yeah. how is how is that process like? And uh, and uh, uh, obviously you know how it's like, but uh, how is it like this time around? Or is it different from before? Again, as Wendy said, it's everything's just more intense. Um, mm -hmm. We well, should tell the story about your first nomination and how how that. I mean, comparatively speaking, so yeah. so this time uh, we're there at six thirty a.m. watching <clears throat> live as they announce the nominees, and we're actually the Academy asked us to please record a reaction video, which yeah. was horrifying to us, but we did it. <laughs> And so that, and then we had to we had to send it out within five minutes to the academy. And so then compare that to the first time you were nominated. Well, so I was nominated in nineteen ninety two, I think, mm -hmm. um, for my first film at the film board, and it was I don't even remember if I knew I had been on a short list. I probably did, I think, but I just remember walking into the film board one day, and the. Uh, studio administrator uh, saw me walk by and she says, wait, wait, Wendy, 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 guess what? You were just nominated. And I was like, really? You know, and, and so was another, uh, a colleague, a, a friend also at the film board and our producers took us out for lunch that day. And then, mm. you know, I mean, there, it got really busy with press after that, but it was just sort of leading up to it. Uh, I wasn't even conscious of being in a race, really. Yeah. And so it's ramped up a lot in that way. And, and one difference is that this year, the shortlist was 15 films, whereas last um, last time, and I think in recent years, even it was only 10. So if you were shortlisted before, you knew you had a 50-50 chance because there are five nominees this time we had a one in three. So, so we, you know, we weren't overly confident. No, it was a strong year to be you know, a lot of yeah, good films. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so tell us what inspired the flying sailor. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about that? Uh, sure. We, we uh, visited a, the Halifax Maritime Museum t about 20 years ago and saw a, a display dedicated to the Halifax explosion. And at that time that, event was not widely known it, it was really that heritage minute that that made that explosion familiar to most Canadians so we were just astonished by the whole thing but particularly by this very brief account of the sailor who had been on the pier uh, and was thrown two kilometers and landed wearing nothing but one rubber boot and just that is such a captivating notion and so hard to believe but what really caught us was the the question, what was that trip like for him to be up there? And so that it just was such an obvious uh, animation idea that we hung on to it for a long time. It was on the back burner for a long time. 
and was always sort of next in line. And then we just finally yeah. got to it in about 2018. We developed it seriously then. And tell us a little bit about the score of, for the Flying Sailor. I mean, it's such a, a imperative part and element of the film, of course. Yeah, yeah I mean, sound in general is absolutely key to this film and it, and it's important in all of our work we we find it um impossible to even develop an idea without working with sound at the same time and um for this one we um we began our process working with uh a lot of um temp tracks we just threw in all sorts of things and sound effects we just uh things we pulled off the internet just to get just to find the shape of the film just to mm. tell the story and we were pulling in at the same time archival footage and doing drawings and that sort of thing so we made an animatic that way and the the music was particularly challenging uh, partly because it's so important but we just we were just trying to capture the right emotional tone for each section and the beginning um, as you may remember, is it's very jaunty and it's kind of cartoony. And we decided to go that route to to give it contrast with what happens at the point of the explosion, because that's really the point that the film begins in the sense of the sailor's trip. Right. But before that, and, and it's a lot because um, there's a big stack of TNT in the story. And that and that's really true. That boat truly was loaded with explosives. So it seems like a cartoon. So, so idea. we kind of thought, well, <laughs> that's you know, a cartoon for sure. And so so when we enlisted Luigi Alamano, our our sound designer and composer, we we sort of said, let's do something cartoony there. And I think we, we had some guide music in there that kind of set the pace mm. and he that was right up Luigi's alley he was you know he just sort of nailed that and then um for the different sections we had really disparate music that we needed something we needed him to make it coherent we needed him to just find that right thing and and it was a and it was a challenge it was a challenge for all of us he really um completely nailed first of all the the plummet to earth one was yeah. um, interesting because that's when we really wanted another shift in tone and yeah. it to be kind of harsh and yeah. wrenching as he goes down. And we had some Russian music in there in our guide track, some, some Stravinsky. And, and then the, the other stuff it, we're, we're, we just love what he did. You know, the, this, it's very simple, this piano and strings and it's, we meant it to be a contrast to the, um, ferocity of the sound effects and the explosion it's kind of a counterbalance and plus our the central idea for us was that this is a near-death experience mm -hmm. and the key part of that is that it's slow motion and so we were taking what's a few seconds in the air and slowing it down to be a few minutes of this whole experience and we wanted the this naked pink sailor to be um, balletic in his flailing motions and the, so the music needed to um go with that and to be as i mentioned in contrast to the the, the catastrophe basically below and then it transitions to him being in um having sort of some fun of flying like a more exhilarating mm -hmm. part of the music and then into outer space it changes again so it, it's um they're very distinct parts it's a little bit almost like a an opera or something. I mean, yeah. some people have said it, it has these kinds, it's, it's really the the act. dynamic range yeah. is, is huge. And, and Luigi was just wonderful to work with. I noticed that the national film board um, always supports, of, of course, and um, the animation, of course. Um, but the two of you on an animation film, or uh, of course, your previous work, what's the benefits of having like two people behind uh, one film? or two directors? Well, I read a quote once that said something to the effect of uh, friendship cuts, uh, doubles joys and cuts griefs in half. And that's what I would say our partnership does mostly. We, you know, we, we scrap sometimes, it has to be said. <laughs> um, and we have little, I don't know, you know, little un, un, not pretty tussles, but mostly... <laughs> um, 
it is a, such a pleasure to have a partner and to be able to toss ideas around with a partner and vet ideas and develop ideas. And um, I would say probably 50% of our production time practically is, is talking things through and working things out. And so that it, animation is kind of a lonely business in the sense that you can quite easily just be a single person in a room. So having two people working on the same thing, it's, it's much cozier. And um, when it comes to stuff like this, it's again, it, it's doing press or talking to people or going places, you know, we just went to Sundance festival. It's hmm. way more fun if you've got your buddy there. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 So but we also have different strengths and weaknesses and that yeah. helps too, because we've, we've really gravitated towards what we do best and um that 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 works out really well it's kind of we're we're now pretty clear on who who does what even though we both have a hand in most of it but we we focus on what we're better at and of course what what is it like to have like the the support of the national film board uh for your film the flying sailor well it, it's it, sorry do you want to, no no go ahead it's inconceivable to think of having made it without them that that Fundamentally, we are creatures of the National Film Board. It's it's the presence of the National Film Board in Canada that has made our careers possible, hmm. that has made us into short filmmakers, uh, because uh, it's really hard to do that if unless you have public funding or have a funder. And um, just that long, proud history of great animated filmmaking when we were coming out of art school, that was something that we definitely wanted to be a part of. Hmm. And so it's, it's a fantastic legacy. And just the fact that they um, basically support your individual vision as a filmmaker is such a rarity in right. the world. And that um, profitability is, is really not part of the conversation. What a, what a luxury. Nobody yeah. said to us, you can't have full frontal male nudity. No, they didn't say a word about that. <laughs> okay, so to, uh, so tell us what's going to happen like the Oscar night. Do you envision of, yeah, to, uh, to take us through it and are you going to uh, going to fly in and then check into your hotel and what happens after what happens after that? Do you guys go on the red carpet and stuff? Or? Good question. Well, there's, well, there's a lot that happens even before that because we there's a nominees lunch happening uh, in February mid-February I think uh so we're going to LA for that that's really fun because really that's fun. just uh like a, a luncheon with only the nominees there so you're you're um with all the other um you know maybe Steven Spielberg will be there and you know Michelle Williams all those people it's very relaxed it's yeah. much more relaxed yeah. than the Oscars itself yeah yeah and then there's then we're going down again for the Annie Awards which is the industry awards for animation and then we'll be going down for the Oscars. And then that week will involve all sorts of other parties. There'll be a Canadian consulate party. There will be screenings. There will be um, uh, what other there things that will make us tired. Things things that we have to find <laughs> things that we have to find clothes for. Yeah, but, we have to find clothes. For but, uh, but on the day of the, the red carpet starts alarmingly early in the day like we have to be ready at like one one o'clock one o'clock wow. or something. okay and then you get in a um so you spend the morning primping, primping and then you <laughs> then you you meet your entourage you know we'll have some other people from the film board and our producer mm. yeah. etc and um, then you get in a limo with these people and you have fun and you you know i can't remember if they if you drink champagne or not probably not but anyway. <laughs> and then then you get you you start the red carpet and last last nuts. last time we did that we were right behind George Clooney actually so we got to uh, um sort of watch that particular spectacle of you know like the all the the press that will cluster around him um they're not interested in us but anyway we that, yeah. that's we're in the background that's elbowing each other that's completely <laughs> fine <you know? laughs> And then you end up in but the, that's a way yeah. that's a real scene that red carpet yeah the red carpet scene as you would yeah, guess yeah. you know these banks of photographers and people yeah. yelling and oh my god yeah and that's and it's you know we're completely fine with the fact that it's not really about us yeah you know, we're absolutely we're a very small um, part of that but we can watch it and be yeah. in the room, and that's sort of fun and 
and then the show and you're we're usually sitting quite far in the back um you sort of see a lot less than you do on tv actually in a way yeah yeah um then uh the fun the other fun part is there's a ball afterwards um and we made it a project last time we went to it that we were going to be bold and and go up and talk to as many famous people as we could just to especially Canadian Canadian ones ones. so we went up to Christopher Plummer and had a chat with him and uh, a few other people and the most memorable one was Gary Oldman yeah we said hello to him and he was there with his mother his uh, quite elderly mother and he was just delighted to talk to us and and he he was really charming and um so yeah that's just it's just fun it's just um the main thing is to try to not take it so seriously but the problem is is when you're in the theater before your category is called and you tell yourself i'm not going to get worked up about this but the (laughs) the matter is there is a possibility you're going to get up in front of a billion people (laughs) there's no changing that so and you get all clammy yeah yeah (laughs) yeah and you're worried you might fall or something (laughs) Yeah. Well, I would like to thank you for taking the time to do this with me. And uh, I want to congratulate the two of you. And I want to congratulate the fact that you're representing Canada, of course, and the National yeah. Film Board. And uh, I want to wish you to the best of luck. And um, again, watching that film uh, back in October when I thought, wow, this is this is a great film. I, like, this is this is just fantastic. And I'm proud. Thank of you. you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you, Fernando. Appreciate your kind words. That means a lot to us to hear that. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Okay. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye, Fernando.